Excellency, dear Member of Parliament, dear friends from the Swiss and Greek energy scene, it's an honor and a pleasure to stay here today and to present you the Swiss energy strategy. What is the framework of Swiss energy policy? We have three main principles of Swiss policy. The first one is we have in Switzerland popular vote. That means every change of the constitution and also possibly every change of a national law can be discussed and also decided from the Swiss people. That means we have to find compromises, and for that we are not able to make big change. We have to go step by step in the direction of a sustainable Swiss energy world. Second principle of Swiss policy is federalism. That means the cantons are responsible for a lot of duties. First of all, it's written in the Constitution that the cantons are responsible also for the building and construction sector. We, from the Confederation, we can only coordinate and steer cantonal initiatives, cantonal proposals. Third principle, we have self-regulation. It's not necessary that all duties are decided and made by administration of state or by the government. First of all, we try to get compromises on the private level, in associations of engineers, architects. And for that, in the building sector of Switzerland, the SEI, the Swiss Association of Engineers and architect has a very important role. They have to design in the direction we have to go in the building sector. What is going on in the energy sector? First of all, on a global level, we have a competition, sometimes a fight, sometimes a war for resources. Second, we, as Switzerland, we are not an island. We are part of the European Union in electrical and gas sector. And all the crisis management goes more and more globally. That means Switzerland is part, is member of the International Energy Agency like Greece. And together we have to look that all the possible crises can be managed. For that, we have a storage of oil, we have also storage of gas, and we have also the possibility to manage crises in the electricity sector. For that, Switzerland has a lot of pump hydro stations because we think it's necessary to have enough reserve capacity in the sector for bringing also electricity in times of crisis to other European countries. And the third thing we have to discuss is climate change. The Swiss government said we accept only a growth of the temperature of two degrees and not more. And we have to do a lot also in our country to reduce CO2 emissions and to reduce energy consumption. At national level, until now, we had increasing energy consumption. We had also, in Switzerland, no fossil fuel. We are discussing now if perhaps in some region we have also this unconventional gas. And more of than 80% of Swiss energy consumption is imported. We are dependent from other countries. What are other 
aspects of Swiss energy scheme. First of all, we have a lot of duties and rules for security of supply and we have standards. We think that we will do a lot for the maintenance of Switzerland's position as energy hub. We think it's also necessary that we are part of the European energy policy and for that we would be integrated more and more in the European crisis management mechanism and we think it's necessary to have a level playing field with the European institutions in the energy policy. You see here our energy consumption. After World War II, it started an explosion, a growth of energy consumption, and you see we need today five times more energy than to, uh, in 1945. And you see also we have 12% gas, we have more than 60% oil and gasoline, and we have 22% electricity. What is important for electricity production? Switzerland has until now no fossil electricity production. That means we have about 60% hydropower and more or less 40% nuclear. Fukushima had a lot of effects of our energy strategy, energy policy, but we had first of all decisions of the government, afterwards of the parliament, and so both decided that we have to go out of nuclear. But we will not go out like Germany to 2020. We think that our existing nuclear power plants can stay as long as they are safe at the grid. That means if every of these power stations stays 50 years, then the last one will go out in 2034. For that, we need a new principle because the four pillars of our strategy have to be renovated. It's clear, the first pillar is energy efficiency, the, the second pillar is renewable energies, and then as a new, we have to discuss what will be the function of the big power stations. Till now, it was clear that you, we would go and construct new nuclear power stations, now it's clear that we have to find a way without. And for that we have to change this part of our electricity production. You see here what we want to do. First of all, we want more hydropower production. We think also it's necessary to have more pump storage power station. We will introduce a lot of new renewable and we think it's also possible that we go for a third time into the fossil power production. We think it's also possible that for a certain time we have some imports because today we have about 60 terawatt hours electricity consumption in Switzerland, but we have imports of 80 terawatt hours and more or less the same will be is also exported to Italy and other countries. For us it's clear we have a strategy and we have time. More than 20 years and for that we need now clear conditions and with these conditions, our electricity sector knows where the future is and what they have to do. 
you see here the different parts of our strategy. First of all, reduced energy consumption in the building sector. Second, broadening electricity supply. Third, maintained electricity imports. Fourth, expanded electricity transmission grid. And then sixth, fifth, strengthened energy research. Then also we, as the public, we have to be front runners, forerunners, together with the cantons and the municipalities. We have Beacon Project and we need also intensified international cooperation. What are the costs of this strategy? We think till 2050 there will be about 30 billion of Swiss, Swiss francs that are needed for this change of our energy world. It's more than zero, but it's only 0.2% uh, of annual GDP that is necessary. And we think when we go ahead now with a certain speed, we will also have opportunities for export of technologies. And for us, the clean tech sector is one of the main sectors for future cooperation with other countries for export of products, systems, technology, and also services. Coming to the energy efficiency in buildings. First of all, about 50% of the whole energy consumption comes from that sector. 30% for heating, air conditioning and hot water, 14% for electricity, and 6% for construction and maintenance. The building sector accounts more than 50% of the CO2 emissions of our country. Building is a major consumer of resources and for that it's important that we, together with the associations of the sector and also together with the cantons, we find the ways to go to a sustainable future in the building sector. There are more than 1.5 million buildings that need be refurbished and the annual rate of renovation is only 1%. We have the target to double this rate and for that we think it's necessary to have standards, to have also finance, money and to have qualified people in the different sectors of the building. One of our main possible element is the CO2 tax. The CO2 tax is for every fossil fuel uh, stationary and this money was originally thought that the money would go back to the economic sector and also to the households. Now we think it's necessary to have one third of this 600 million for the renovation, insulation of the building sector. That means Every year we have about 200 million for this program of construction of the cantons. That's the first. We need to reduce energy consumption in the existing buildings and uh, real estate sector. Second, it's necessary to have new standards and building codes we think, and you will hear today some examples also, to introduce building labels. Minergy is a recent our standard with our label, but for the future we think it's necessary to have their standards, labels for sustainable construction. We think also it's necessary to have a system of audits for buildings, that means every five years 
there will be a consultation, a person, an inspector come to the uh, house owners and tell them how they can reduce energy consumption. And we will also have financial incentives for the replacement of fossil and electric heating system. For that, I'm very pleased that we can discuss these issues today with our partners in Greece. In March of this year, our Minister, Federal Councillor Doris Leuthard, signed a memorandum of understanding with Greece, with the Energy Ministry of Greece. And in this memorandum of our understanding, we have a cooperation in the field of energy efficiency, renewable energies, energy research, and we have also a cooperation in the field of gas. Because we think the future European electricity production will have a lot of gas-fired power stations. Gas-fired power stations have a life period of 15 years, nuclear power stations of 8 years, and in a time of change, it's necessary to have only for 10 or 15 years stable conditions and afterwards perhaps techno technological revolutions, technological innovations will have effects and help us to reduce more and more energy consumption and to have more and more renewable energy in our energy system. For that, thank you very much. We will have a lot of discussions about the different issues of the building sector. Thanks.